Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're changing gears a little bit and we are doing some uh, required maintenance on the daily instead of race car stuff, which is depressing because this isn't fun. Um, anyway, drove the excursion down to the in-laws the other day for Christmas and uh, the day prior to that ran fine. That day uh, we took a you know two hour trip down in for Christmas with the family and the excursion just ran like absolute garbage. Um, it was clearly missing on one cylinder or more. I wasn't sure. Um, threw some fuel system cleaner in there just to make sure it wasn't even water in the, in the uh, fuel. Um, that wasn't the case. So um, here I am today. I went ahead and I plugged in the OBD2 um, into the vehicle, ran the, you know, check to see what codes were there. Got that guy plugged in there um, and uh, came back with a P0125 code and a P0, I forgot what the hell it was. Um, anyway, it was basically a misfire on cylinder six. So at this point, um, obviously it doesn't tell me the cause of the misfire, just that there is one. Um, so I know... That six, after I looked it up quick just to see, because I wasn't sure, um, is the front cylinder here. Uh, point two, that's the coil right there. Okay, so I, I unplugged it. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this coil out and pull, actually I'll probably pull this other front coil out over here because it's easier to get to. Um, and I'm just gonna flip flop them and then see if the error follows that coil to cylinder number one. If the error follows the, if the problem follows to cylinder number one, then I know that the coil is the problem and I need to get a new coil. Um, and then at that point, buy a new coil, throw it in there and, and call it a day. Um, if it does not, then we have some further research to do. Uh, but I'm, I'm guessing that is probably where we're at right now. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get going on that. And then we'll see what we end up with here. All right, here's the two coils out. Um, as expected, same part numbers. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yep, same part numbers. Obviously look identical. Nothing from the outside that looks wrong or broken, torn, etc. I mean, you can look for torn boots and things like that. You know, these are rubber down here. Up here where they join the coil, there's a separation. It goes from rubber to the hard plastic casing. Um, but yeah, I don't see anything that would indicate from the exterior anyways, that there's an issue with the coil. So a lot of times when these go bad, they just go bad. They're good or they're not. Um, there typically isn't a warning of some sort, you know, like you're losing power on a cylinder or what have you. They just stop working, you know, electronics. Um, so I'm gonna switch these around and I'm gonna fire it up and see if it runs any better. Since I didn't video taking it out, I'll video putting one in. Um, you can see there's just one bolt hole there to hold these down. It's a seven millimeter head. There's your hole, it goes down to the spark plug and you basically just slide that buddy right in there. And push her down, wiggle it back and forth, twisty, twisty. Just want to make sure you get it pushed down onto that spark plug and get her seated down in there. And then put your bolt back in, plug your connector from the harness in, and that will provide the signal you need for the coil to activate. All right, so let's see what we get here in a minute. All right, so I cleared the codes. Uh, right now it's actually running smooth as could be. And uh, definitely not hearing the misfire that I was hearing before. Uh, I mean, potentially we could be talking about a uh, just the uh, coil somehow became unsuited, unseated on the spark plug. I kind of doubt that, but who knows? Um, so I'm gonna let this warm up about 10 minutes or so and then I'm gonna take it on a short drive and see if any codes pop up again and I'll bring you back when we're doing that all right so it's back took about eh, less than five minutes for the issue to come back 
So I don't know if you can hear it, but there's this almost like a, it's an uneven sound to the idle. It's almost like a little pop, almost sounds like a, an exhaust leak. But I can feel it just sitting in the vehicle. If you come up to the exhaust, you can probably hear it. second than that rough idle. So that uh, that coil's not firing. Um, it's not showing up yet in the DTCs, but I'm still gonna go ahead and we're just gonna take it for a quick drive. Ugh. And you might be able to hear it better as we drive around. Sounds like absolute garbage. That's what a uh, nine cylinder V10 sounds like. Yeah, roll that window down too. back and forth between the misfire and running on a on 10. Basically it's when it's under load um, that's when it really starts to misfire. If it's just kind of cruising along on cruise control, um, right now I'm going up a hill, so it's under load. So, um, I just need the code to show up and tell me whether or not it is still cylinder six or whether or not it has moved over to cylinder one and followed that coil. So I'm gonna drive it around a little more and uh, we'll pick it back up when I get back to the house. All right, so the codes came back and uh, we got a P0300, which is a random misfire or cylinder misfire, and a P0301, which is a cylinder misfire um, or misfire on cylinder one. So that means that the two coils that I switched from six to one and one to six, the error followed the coil, which tells me that that coil is bad. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna order a coil off of Rock Auto, most likely um, a uh, uh, motorcraft coil. Um, the, the Ford modular motors just really seem to prefer the motorcraft coils. Um, the aftermarket like Excels and MSDs just don't seem to last very long in these for whatever reason. Um, so that's generally your best bet. And that's what I'm going to do. And then um, hopefully that gets taken care of. So um, I am going to just end the video here. Um, but I just wanted to give some of you guys out there that don't know how to, you know, kind of diagnose some of this stuff. Um, give you a little little heads up on, you know, this really isn't a difficult job. Um, you know, you get something like uh, this little guy here. It's upside down um, and backwards. But anyway... Um, it's just a OBD2, OBD2 scanner. Um, I picked this one up from Amazon. Um, this one is, this one's a Bluetooth one. There's also Wi-Fi ones. Um, I prefer the Bluetooth because then I can hook it up to a laptop, a phone, a tablet, what have you that you have on hand, and you don't need Wi-Fi to connect it to a device. Um, it's just more handy for me. That way, if you're out in the middle of somewhere, you got this little guy with you, hook it up to your phone, see what's going on. Um, and then this also has, they have their own app, which is what I use to look up the codes. Um, there's other third-party apps out there, which you can use. Um, so there's there's plenty of options. Um, there's tons of different OBD2 scanners on Amazon and, and eBay, I'm sure, what have you. 
Um, I think I picked this one up for 25 bucks on sale a few years ago on a Black Friday deal. They're, I think right now they're probably around 40 or 50 bucks regular price on Amazon. Um, but yeah, lots of options out there. Um, it, no big deal to go pick one up and just have one in your vehicle. Um, so we'll call that one basically a wrap. I know what's going on. I know how to fix it now and I'll get it taken care of and carry on with life. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, keep watching for more content. And I will try to get better about getting stuff uploaded because I suck at it right now. <laughs> but uh, take care, guys.